Good evening. We want to say good evening to everyone that's here on tonight, uh, this evening. Um, I want to thank you all so much for showing your concerns in the city of Greensboro, in the business of city of Greensboro. Uh, again, we're thankful to have you on tonight. Tonight, we're going to ask that Councilman Miller would open us up with prayer, and immediately after prayer, we'll go into our agenda. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Councilman Miller, for that opening prayer. Let the minutes reflect that everyone is present on tonight. Brings us down to number three on the agenda, the approval of the September 6, 2022 regular session. Council, I give you time to read over that. Once you've read over it, ask that you would signify that you're ready by raising your right hand. Everyone's ready. I'll entertain a motion and a second to accept the minutes of September 6, 2022. Motion. Second. It's been second. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. Mm -hmm. Unanimous decision. Brings us down to number four. Ms. Kale Hammonds and Kendrick Ward, the supervisor's report. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Good evening. It is always a pleasure to come and stand before y'all and share the work that we're doing in the Community Development Department and in the Main Street Office. And, um, you know, I'd really just like to start by thanking all of you for your support and the, um, for the work that we do. We very much, Kendrick and I, feel very passionately about our jobs and our work for the city. And, we really enjoy having the opportunity to, to come and share some of our updates over the last six months with you guys. So you may remember um, the way that we generally handle our supervisor's reports is at the end of the year, which has kind of creeped into like January and February, we give you a big bound report where we tell you, okay, this is 12 months worth of what we've been doing. And then about halfway through, which is this report tonight, we give you a truncated version of that report where we show you, okay, this is what we've been up to for the first half of the year. So tonight we're going to share with you what we've done for the first part of um, 2022. So with that said, um, we generally organize our discussion um, according to the four points of the Main Street program, the Main Street approach. And so that's economic restructuring, design, organization, and promotion. And so you have a little um, handout in front of you and we're gonna go through each of those sections and share with you a little bit about what we've done. And Kendrick and I will kind of bounce back and forth so it'll also give you a feel for who worked on which different project in the office. So um, I'm gonna skip down and start with the community home improvement grants, the CHIP grants. So you may remember that Greensboro received a third CHIP grant award for $300,000, and that CHIP grant was put on hold during the pandemic. It is intended to fund um, owner-occupied rehabilitation of houses in, um, in Greensboro. And um, it's intended to fund um, rehabilitation of owner-occupied housing in Greensboro. 
And so now that things have calmed down with the pandemic and people are comfortable having folks in and out of their homes, contractors, things like that, we've actually put that project back out to bid. And we have um, two homes that are going to go through the CHIP rehabilitation process with us. We have contractors who are pre-qualified and received bid packages. There's a bug in front of me, sorry. Received bid packages just the other day, or at the end of last week. And so we'll be um, receiving bids in the next few weeks from contractors on that project and hopefully get those two houses going soon. So that's the status of CHIP. The other thing we've done in the area of economic restructuring is maintain Greensboro's GIC certification, Georgia Initiative for Community Housing. I know Mr. Miller was on our housing team when we initially went through the GIC process. And Greensboro has been certified as a GIC community for um, three different cycles. We initially went through the training and then we have to continue to maintain certain standards in order to continue to be certified as a GIC community. So we're maintaining that certification for Greensboro. And that helps us on various grant applications, um, like CHIP, for example, some of the other things like community development block grant applications. All of those things we um, sometimes get extra bonus points if we are a, um, a CHIP or a GIC community. The other thing in economic restructuring is our rural zone tax credits. Um, Greensboro was designated in the second round of cities as a rural zone community, and our designation is set to expire at the end of 2023. These are really lucrative tax credits for people who invest in downtown Greensboro. They get tax credits for investing in property, rehabilitating property, creating jobs. And so we in our office have done um, kind of we're, we're pushing out information about the program so that people know, like, if you want to use this, you've got about 12 months before it's set to expire, and we really hope that people will, will continue to use the program. So um, Kendra's going to tell you a little bit about some of the grand openings and ribbon cuttings and also our businesses gained and lost here today. So one of the things we track is how many businesses open in downtown and also how many businesses close. Since January, we have had um, four new businesses open in downtown Greensboro, um, at, equivalent to having 10 new jobs created in downtown, and we've lost two businesses. Um, we gained Main and, um, Broad and Main Antiques, which is at 101 North Main Street, um, the Burt Food Truck, which is at Oconee Bruin, um, Family Ties Barbecue, which is 118 North Main, or South Main Street, and Zen's Doggy Spa. Um, and then we've also lost the Greensboro Pharmacy this year and Royal King's Beauty Supply. But we're also working hard to fill these vacant seats, vacant spaces with new businesses to come in. So if you'll turn the page with me, we'll skip on over to design for downtown. Um, design is how, the, our, how we look in downtown, how we incorporate our historic preservation in downtown. And um, this past year, we um, had five new solar boxes added to downtown Greensboro. Um, we got that, we got these solar boxes through a grant. So that is a new walking tour for downtown Greensboro to allow tourists and also locals to hear stories about our different stops. And we've created a marketing piece which is on our, done the promotion side, about all the solar boxes we had. Um, we had two already, so we just added the, the five more. Um, one of the other things we work in design is um, pre-2022, uh, or 21, the Main Street office had a design studio. Well, they closed um, the design studio through our Main Street office through the state. So it was very important for us to continue to offer facade rehabilitation um, design renderings to merchants that want to come into downtown Greensboro. So we have partnered with the Main Street Studios out of Athens, and um, we offer, we've offered six design studio facade grant rehabs um, to six different businesses in downtown to try to get them open. Um, one of the main ones that would probably stick out to you is 111 North Main Street. It's the old chamber building. Um, he went through the process and went from the red brick with the green shutters to that beautiful green with the black awnings and the yellow door. So those are some of the things that we do in our office and partner with to make so that these business owners can look and see how cool their building would be if they put a new paint color on it. And then I'll let Kale take over with the street, street improvements. Street sure. Stuff. So we continue to pursue funding for streetscape improvements in downtown. Streetscape is basically our sidewalks, our street lights, benches, landscaping, things like that. We have been currently operating under a Georgia Department of Transportation Transportation Alternatives Program grant, a TAP grant. 
Um, that was for about $474,000 and funded back in FY19. And so that grant funded the preliminary design and engineering work for um, streetscape improvements, mostly along East Broad Street. It also includes a little section of West Street as well. So um, that project is moving along nicely. It's moving through GDOT's design process, which is very intense and complicated, but we're, you know, we're making steady progress. And it's now ready to move into the right-of-way phase, which is the next step of any GDOT project. And so we have submitted for funding under the this year's call for TAP, TAP projects um, for right-of-way funding. And we submitted in June when the initial call for projects went out. Well, I guess they didn't get very many applications because they put out a second call for projects, um, for TAP projects later on in the summer. And so it turned out that we were eligible to apply again in the second call. And so I actually applied twice for TAP this year. Um, and the second application um, was to start the engineering and design process for the next phase of our streetscape, phase five of streetscape, which would be along Court and East Street. So it would be like a step behind um, the Broad Street section. And we expect funding announcements for this round of TAP um, really later, by the end of September, is what they're telling us. So um, very excited about that. The, ma the mayor said, Kale, are you applying for this grant? And I said, I've already done it. And then I, I dug in and I looked a little bit more and I was like, oh gosh, I guess I need to do it again. So we actually, we applied twice for TAP in this, in this current round. So that was actually really exciting for us. Um, Moving on, the other, the other section of Main Street and the Main Street approach is basically organization. So if you're, gonna, if you're gonna do good work in your downtown, you've gotta make partnerships, you've gotta be organized, you've gotta have trained staff. And so this section just really gives you an overview of some of that. Kendrick has done a fabulous job um, keeping us uh, certified with the Office of Downtown Development and keeping us certified as a National Trust Main Street City. We both are still super proud of the fact that Greensboro is a Georgia exceptional Main Street, a gem. There are not very many of those in the state and I believe we're still the smallest gem. Um, there's fewer than 20, 20 gems and um, we were designated very early on and we have worked really hard to maintain that designation so that's something for us as a community to really be proud of. Staff training. Most of our training lately has been focused on um, having the GDOT training in place, the Georgia Department of Transportation training in place, that we need to be able to go after TAP funding. So it's wonderful when an agency puts out a call for grants and funding and things like that, but a lot of times there's certifications that your community has to have before you can even be eligible to apply for it. GIC is kind of like that, the Georgia Initiative for Community Housing. And through the Georgia Department of Transportation, LAP certification, Local Area Project Administration, is part of that. So Kendrick and I have done a lot of those classes. I know the city manager has done several as well. Um, and then also on our staff training list, our, our mayor, Corey Williams, completed Main Street 101. And so we were very appreciative of his time. And we extend an invitation to any of you who haven't done Main Street 101. If, if that's something you're interested in, we'd love to facilitate getting you registered for that class. Um, so moving on down, a big part of organization, as I mentioned earlier, is partnerships with other organizations out in the community. And I know I've spoken with this body before about a partnership with Habitat for Humanity. You guys authorized the city to pursue um, a grant called the Innovative Grant from the Georgia Department of Community Affairs that would ultimately fund infrastructure improvements for a Habitat-led um, project called Baines Creek. I wanted to circle back to you all and let you know that we did submit a pre-application for that grant and it was well received and DCA, the Department of Community Affairs, came back and said, Greensboro, we'd love to invite you to submit a full application for innovative funding. And at the end of the day, um, Habitat for Humanity determined that they would not be able to pursue an application in this funding cycle due to timing constraints. So we have um, tabled that for now. We will not be moving forward with that innovative grant um, that you guys authorized back. It was in the winter sometime that we were talking about that. So I just wanted to kind of close that loop with you all and let you know that we're not pursuing that at this time. 
the last, one of the last things in organization is um, we partner with the Augusta Visitor Center off of I-20 every year. Um, this is something we've been doing for uh, nearly 10 years now, but they have a box in the Augusta Welcome Center. And we go down and we decorate it for Greensboro. Um, and it's one of the things that we track our tourism. Um, it uh, helps us track our tourism for downtown. So we had it from the months of May to August and actually one week in September. But during that time, um, we had 141,000 people that saw our box um, that brought traffic to downtown Greensboro. Our merchants love us. Um, it's very inexpensive for us. And it costs us about two cents per person that sees our box every single year to drive traffic to maybe want to come back here and visit and spend money or even potentially move here. We've had some people like buy houses in Greensboro because of stopping at the Welcome Center and seeing how lovely our town is. Finally, on the next page under organization, um, I feel like it's important for all of you to know the things that we're working on. And, and sometimes we work on things that aren't pure Main Street um, because Greensboro is a small town and, and we're always willing to jump in and help wherever we're needed. And especially over the last couple of years with the pandemic, um, that has certainly been the case. So I wanted to just kind of provide you with an overview. A lot of this you're already going to be knowledgeable of, but I, I did want to share with you that our office worked on helping to secure some of the pandemic relief funding through the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, there was a lot of paperwork that had to be submitted. There were um, documents that we had to provide in order to receive those funds. There's an annual report now that we have to complete each year. And so if you look at the little chart there, it just kind of gives you an overview of, you know, when were we working on it? What were we doing? What did it end up being used for? Just so that you, you know what, what we're spending our time on. And so I wanted y'all to be aware of that. And I've also included some quick takeaways about ARPA funding for Greensboro, just so that when you hear information in the news about the different funding, you can make sure you're comparing apples to apples and, and that what you're hearing is actually applicable to our community. So I, I definitely am not an expert on it, but um, both of us have spent a good amount of time listening to webinars and trying to make sure that we know how that how those resources can be used in our community so that Greensboro doesn't miss out on anything um, so I just wanted y'all to have a little bit of that information and I believe the rest is all promotion so Kendra is going to tell us about all the fun things <laughs> The one last thing in organization that we do is we track downtown data. Um, and since July, um, this little chart kind of is through July um, that you have in front of you. The big number that really stands out for us being a small community, um, when I did our public private investment calculation so far since January to July, $1.7 million has been invested in downtown Greensboro in our commercial district. That's amazing for a small town. Um, there are towns around us that are twice and three times our size. They don't even have that much in like the six months, almost seven months. So that is a, I, I'm very pleased with it. Um, but that was definitely six buildings sold and it also had um, three re, uh, commercial rehabilitations to the houses, um, to the buildings in downtown. So that is one of the reasons the, the number is so big. So the last thing we do in Main Street is promotion is our last four points. So since August, we have had two events in downtown. The Southland Jubilee was back this year. Um, it was a rainy start to the day, so we had quite a few people that no-showed. But um, if you sign up to come to, to Jubilee and don't show up, you don't get your money back. So <laughs> I hated that they didn't come because it ended up being a great day. It was beautiful. The vendors that were here actually said they had a great day. Our merchants have completely said that the Jubilee is full back, full back and full force, so they are happy um, with their cash registers ringing. And then also in June, we had our summer concert with um, a little a kid from Athens who's 20 years old that people really like, um, and a 90s tribute. And we had roughly 1,000 people that came to that summer concert in the four hours that we have. Um, and the last thing for promotion is our marketing efforts. Uh, we always put out a 2020, or we always put out a marketing rack card for events. So that was produced. We are reprinting and updating our downtown brochure. We do we print about 20,000 of those that go across the state and also are locally. Uh, we had our solar box walking tour that y'all have in front of you. Um, we re, uh, did our downtown website. Um, we have some print ads and also the Augusta Visitor Center. So these are a few of the snapshot things we've done for promoting downtown to get to drive traffic here. And 
And that's our report. Yeah, that's, that's what that's that's what we have for you tonight. And we're always available to answer questions in, in this format or even just if you wanted to reach out to us individually. We love sharing about the work that we do and, and we're always available. Thank you all so much, and keep doing the great job that you're doing. Councilman Moore, do you have any questions? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor. City Manager, do you have any questions? No, sir. City Attorney? No, sir. City Clerk? No. Councilman Miller? I just have one question. I need to uh, talk to you, Kev. Yes, sir. And I give you a call maybe tomorrow, Wednesday, one. Okay, I just sure. want to talk to you about the CHIP grant. Yes, sir. No. Councilwoman River? No. Councilman Neal? No, sir. Thank you so much. And Kendra, you go stick around, right? I am. I'm not moving. All right. <laughs> so the next thing, I guess, on the agenda that I have for y'all is our holiday lighting contract. It's a renewal contract with Christmas Decor um, out of Covington. Um, it is to light, wrap eight trees around downtown Greensboro with white lights. Our Leland Cypress tree that we put on the courthouse lawn for the lighting of the tree. A total of 38 light poles with white lights, garland, and red um, bows at the top, and also our bistro lighting. Y'all should have that packet in front of you. We do. Council, do you all see the packet for the renewal, a decorating renewal? Should have came out with this first agenda. And it's yeah. the same company we've been using for years. Um, they hold our lights for us. Part of this is we rent the lights from them and they put them up, guarantee them, um, have insurance on them. So it's definitely, they know what they're doing. You guys had a chance to look at it? I'll give you a chance to look at it. I have one question. Yes, sir. Um, Initial payment options. Mm -hmm. Option one, mm -hmm. partial down payment. Then we have option two, mm -hmm. um, full payment with prepay incentive save. Mm -hmm. Are we shooting for that 18 or are we going with the, your total? Of no, 19? we're going. We're shooting for the initial the the 18. If we pay if we pay early and let them install early, we get a discount on it. Okay. All right. Any more questions, Councilman Moore? Nothing, Mr. Mayor. Council, any questions? No. I entertain a motion and a second to accept the decorating renewal for 2022. Motion. Second. It's been second. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. All those opposed, let it be known by the same sign. Four one vote. I'm sorry. Three one vote. <coughs> Thank you so Thank much. You. Mr. Lamar Calumet, would you please take the stand? <laughs> Lamar is coming to give us a report on our water department. Clean water department, I'm sorry. Good evening, Mayor and, and Council. It's good to be with you tonight. Good evening. <clears throat> Uh, just wanted to kind of give you an overview of what's going on at the water treatment plant. Of course, you probably all know that the water treatment plant is located on Highway 278, about three miles out of town. And then the raw pumping station is another three miles down on Lake Oconee, a little brick building right there on, at the bridge there at, at Lake Oconee. Now, we pump with three high-service pumps from the raw pumping station. We alternate those pumps from time to time, but two of them are five years old and one of them is 42 years old. And so we pump up to the water treatment plant and uh, we are permitted for 3.3 million gallons per day out of Lake Oconee. Now we can't produce that much and I'll get to that, but we, we have, it, the water, it, you know, goes through a 12 inch pipe up to the water treatment plant. We treat the water there and we have three high service pumps there uh, that pump water into town. Now we, we alternate the usage, the usage of those pumps. Two of them are about five years old. One of them is 42 years old. 
We're in the process of getting bids on both the raw pump that's 42 years old and the high service pump at the plant that's 42 years old uh, to, re to replace those. So that's where we stand there. Uh, we are in, the, right now we, have, we are pumping 687,000 gallons a day. Now that's on an average, 687,000 gallons. That's a lot for a little community like we have. But uh, we're, like I said, we're permitted to withdraw at 3.3 million. And we're, the plant itself can only produce 1.5 million because it's designed that way. You know, the filters are designed that way for 1.5 million. So we're, you know, a little less than half capacity. So at full capacity, you would certainly have to run 24 hours a day, you know, and you'd have to, you know, upgrade the plant somewhat. So anyway, that's where we stand now. Uh, last year, we, uh, if I take the numbers from June of last year, of, let's just say last year, June, we were up this year by 7.2%. In July, we were up 12.5% as much the water we produced. And in August, it was up 3%. So as an average of those, of those three uh, months, we, were, we had increased 7.6%. So we can see it. A steady increase in our in our usage in our in our sales, so uh, that's where we are. That is an average of 11.1 11.1 hours per day. So you can see now that's on you know seven days a week. You know, so that's uh, that's where we are with our hours. Now we have uh, we have myself. And, and another operator that are class ones, and then Terry Surgic is there with us with a, with a class two, uh, excuse me, with a class three. He's working on his class two license. So, uh, you know, I know we've talked about, you know, increasing our production, and Mike would need to put on another uh, operator if that, if we had to go to more hours than 11 hours a day. The plan is running very, very well. The only thing that I can see is that we'll need to upgrade those pumps moving forward. Thank you. Is there any questions from the council? No questions. No questions. Yeah, I have one. Mr. Callaway, when you say upgrading the pump, which I know at 142 years old, how soon are you talking about it, upgrading it? Well, I've got bids in right now. So we, I think the last time I came before the council, I kind of hinted that also. And uh, so Mr. Neal and I, and we've talked about it a little bit. So uh, we are getting those bids in as we speak. Thanks, sir. That's it. Any more questions from the council? None. Thank you, Mr. Calloway. Thank Keep you. doing a great job that you're doing. Thank you. Next on, the, we'll be down on number six on the agenda, second reading of the annexation of parcel 070A000410. How are you? Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Good evening. This is the uh, second hearing for this annexation. Um, the city of Greensboro is the applicant in this case uh, using because um, while this property abuts uh, city property, it is, not, it is county. And there's a large piece of property around it that's approximately 120 acres that if it were to be annexed in, this, if we don't annex this parcel in uh, 1211 Armor Circle, it would become an island, a county island in the city. So to be compliant with state law, uh, we're requesting that we an um, to annex this property in. It's only one acre. Um, and uh, the owners, you know, we've notified the owners. They have not spoken out against this uh, annexation. Um, neither in favor nor in opposition. And this, uh, if you were to approve this, this would be contingent on the approval of um, parcel 0880000010, which is a 120 acre parcel 
directly behind this piece. Again, it's just one acre. Uh, we're requesting that you annex it in um, as it's currently A2, which is um, residential agricultural uh, Green County. We're uh, requesting to be annexed in as R1 low density residential. So it would maintain the same use, um, maintain this, it would, it would stay basically the same, just come into the city. Council, any questions? Any questions? No questions. You've heard the request coming from Ms. Claire to annex this piece of property at 1211 Armour Circle and rezoning, rezoning from A2 Agricultural Residential to R1 Low Density Residential. I entertain a motion to approve um, this annexation. Motion and a second. Motion to approve. Second. It's been second. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. Thank you so much. Unanimous decision. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Thank you very much. Brings us down to number seven, adoption of the millage rate for 2022-2023. City manager, if you would head us off. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor and Council, um, the uh, highest inflationary millage rate that will support their oncoming budget for 2022-2023 is actually a millage rate decrease of 0 0.019 mills of 5.723 if you choose to adopt it. Any questions coming from the council? I'm looking at it, but did I hear you correctly, Mr. Manager? Yes, uh, uh, 5.723. Yeah, gotcha. That's down from 5.742, right? Yes, sir, it's a rollback. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Any more questions coming from the council? No further questions. Entertain a motion and a second to adopt the millage rate for 2022-2023. Motion. Second. It's been second. Any further discussion? No further discussion. All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. Unanimous decision. Brings us down to number eight, which is unfinished business. As of right now, I have none. Councilman Moore, do you have any unfinished business? No, Mr. Mayor. City Manager? No, sir. City Attorney? No, Mr. Mayor. City Clerk? No. Councilman Miller? No, sir, ma'am. Councilwoman Rivers? No. Councilman Neal? No, sir. All right. Brings us down to number nine. I have no new business either. Uh, Councilman Moore, do you have any? No, Mr. Mayor. City Manager? No, sir. City Attorney? No, Mr. Mayor. City Clerk? No. Councilman Miller? No, Mr. Mayor. Councilwoman Rivers? No. Councilman Neal? No, sir. All right. Brings us down to number 10, public comments. Uh, we're going to hold these comments to a two-minute minimum. Two-minute minimum. Uh, you are now, we're now asking for public comments. No public comments. All right, no public comments. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I just wanted to come and say that I'm proud of the mayor and the city councilman, and thank you guys for focusing on the issues of the city of Greensboro. Great job. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Brings us down to number 11 on the agenda, which is adjournment. And obtain a motion and a second to adjourn this meeting. Motion. Second. It's been second. All those, any further discussion? All those in favor, let it be known by raising your right hand. Councilwoman Rivers, I ask that you would pray us out on tonight. Amen. Thank you all so much for your time.